Hello friends, today we will be studying the introduction to ribs. Ribs are bilateral bony arches. They form major component of the thoracic cage. Normally seen as 12 pairs of ribs, numbered from 1 to 12 from above downwards. Ribs are arranged obliquely. The anterior end of a particular rib is at a lower level as compared to the posterior end, thus making the rib oblique. The obliquity is maximum in the ninth rib. The eighth rib is most laterally projected. Length of the ribs increases from first to seventh rib and then it decreases from the seventh to twelfth rib, thus the seventh rib is the longest. When we talk of width of the ribs, this gradually reduces from above downwards. The gaps between adjacent ribs are called the intercostal spaces. These spaces are deeper on the anterior aspect of the thoracic cage and also in the upper part of the thoracic cage. Now let us see how can we classify the ribs. There are various ways of classifying them. According to the similarity and dissimilarity of the morphological features, the ribs can be classified as typical ribs and atypical ribs. Typical ribs have similar morphological features, examples being 3rd to ninth ribs. Atypical ribs have some special features and they can be differentiated from the other ribs. And examples here are the 1st, 2nd, 10th, 11 and the 12th ribs. According to attachment of the ribs with the sternum, we can classify them as true ribs and false ribs. True ribs are ribs which articulate with the sternum anteriorly. Examples being the 1st to 7th ribs. While false ribs are not connected to the sternum anteriorly, and examples being 8th to 12th ribs. What we see here is the anterior view of the bony skeleton. This here is the lateral margin of the sternum and we see here the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th ribs each connected by their respective coastal cartilage to the lateral border of the sternum. Thus, these ribs, that is the first to seventh ribs, are true ribs, while the eighth, ninth, and the tenth ribs are attached by their respective coastal cartilages to the coastal cartilage of the rib above. Thus, they do not reach the lateral border of the sternum, hence, we call them as false ribs. Similarly, the 11th and the 12th ribs do not reach the anterior part of the thoracic cage and thus are not connected to the sternum. Hence, they also constitute the false ribs. We can also classify the ribs according to the articulation of the ribs. And this is having three types. Vertebro sternal ribs, vertebro chondral ribs and vertebral ribs. Vertebral sternal ribs are connected posteriorly to the thoracic vertebrae and anteriorly to the lateral border of the sternum directly or indirectly through the coastal cartilage. Examples are the first to seventh ribs. These are same as the true ribs which we have already seen. Vertebro chondral ribs are connected posteriorly to the thoracic vertebrae but anteriorly they are connected by their respective coastal cartilages to the coastal cartilage of the rib above and they do not connect with the sternum at all. Examples being 8th, 9th and 10th ribs. What we see here again is the anterior view of the bony skeleton and we see here the first to seventh ribs which are the true ribs, also classified as vertebro-sternal ribs. The 8th, 9th and 10th ribs, 
which are connected by their coastal cartilages to the coastal cartilage of the rib above they do not connect to the sternum so they are vertebro chondral while what we see here is posterior view of the thoracic cage where we can appreciate that the ribs are connected to the thoracic vertebrae posteriorly now when we talk of the third variety that is the vertebral ribs posteriorly they are attached to the thoracic vertebrae and anteriorly they are free examples being 11th and 12th ribs again the posterior view of the bony skeleton what we see here is the 11th and the 12th rib their anterior ends are free they do not reach the anterior part of the thoracic cage they are connected only to the thoracic vertebrae hence we classify them as vertebral ribs a lateral view of the thoracic cage giving us a clear picture about the anterior ends of the 11th and the 12th ribs so not connected to the sternum or to the coastal cartilages anteriorly these are vertebral ribs so according to their articulation we can classify the ribs into three types vertebrosternal vertebrochondral and vertebral next we see how can we classify ribs according to the state of the anterior end this has two parts floating ribs and non floating ribs the floating ribs are those wherein the anterior end of the rib is free and is not attached to the adjacent coastal cartilage examples being the 11th and the 12th ribs same as the vertebral ribs which we have seen earlier while the non floating ribs are those wherein the anterior end is fixed due to attachment with the adjacent bone or the coastal cartilage and the examples here being the first to the 10th ribs so these include the vertebrosternal and the vertebrochondral ribs which we have already seen so similarly seeing the same lateral view of the thoracic cage to appreciate the floating ribs what we see here is the 11th and the 12th rib anterior end is free thus they are called as the floating ribs thus we have seen the introduction to the ribs and also the different ways in which we can classify these ribs thank you